Good day to you from Virginia Beach. You know, here the local newspaper, which is called the Virginian Pilot, is running a lead story in the paper today with the headline, In Beach, Help is Just a Text Away. In Beach, Help is Just a Text Away. It's a story about how if you feel a perpetrator is threatening you and you're not able to make a phone call because that may make him or her enraged, you can text your plea for help to 911 and the police will show up and there's actually a, a situation where that happened. It's an example of social media in today's modern age giving us feelings of security and safety and perhaps even preventing some really bad disaster. But is social media also something that's getting in the way of how people are leading their lives? How many people who will be down the beach today, right here, how many people will be down the beach and really not seeing anything? They're texting all the time. Or they hear the ding of Facebook go off as a notification and they grab their phone to check it out, missing the crab running in front of them in the sand, missing the water lapping up on the beach. And does that really matter? Is that important that people are spending their time on social media with their handheld devices rather than seeing what's around them, that they're turning inward? Of course, I'm not implying that social media is automatically negative in our lives. I, I don't mean to anyhow, because how many people will meet for the first time at the beach today and become romantic partners, and they did that through texting? How many mothers will be satisfied and feel assured that their child is safe because they've just texted him from the ice cream stand, having been away from the mother or father on the beach for half an hour, and the mother and father is getting worried? So social media are permeating permeating our lives in, in many good ways and also some ways that we might consider to be detractions. And that's what we're going to try and start to take on in today's first class, taking on the book as well. We have chapter one in this book, and I do want to just highlight again for you that if you do not have this book and read this book, you will not pass this class. You will be using concepts from the book, including today's class, in the discussion posts and the replies. And even though this chapter is only three pages long, there's still plenty of stuff that we're going to be using from it in today's video lecture and also in your discussion post question. By the way, the book is a really interesting book, the way that it's laid out. We're going to study social media from many different vantage points. We're going to take a look at social media from an economic vantage point, a social vantage point, a racial vantage point, very current um, and has been current with what's happening in the media in the last year and a half with the racial incidents between um, police officers and people who have been shot and killed. And so we're going to study social media in very relevant ways in this course. And we're going to start right now by talking about social media as not really just being something that exists in and of itself as a medium. It is rather another example of mass media. And that's a course intro to mass media that most of you in this class have had to take. And social media are just one other example of mass media. Remember, the defining feature of a mass medium is that it reaches hundreds perhaps thousands of anonymous people through a technology. That's what a mass medium is. It's, it's a device like a television or a phone that reaches hundreds, maybe thousands of people, and those people don't necessarily know each other. That's what makes them anonymous. A person who's watching an NFL, an NFL football game in Philadelphia is going to be joined by thousands, hundreds, uh, millions perhaps of people watching that same game in but their living rooms are in Phoenix or Minneapolis. So the audience is anonymous for mass media. Now, what makes social media special is sort of what the book talks about in this opening chapter. It's not necessarily that the app it makes something a social media, the Twitter app, for example. It's not necessarily the device that makes something a social medium, like a, like a cell phone. What makes a social medium a social medium is how it is used, how it is used in practice, as the book says it. And so social media essentially bring people together. That's what social media do. And that's what you're doing when you're, when you're Snapchatting. That's what you're doing when you're tweeting. That's what you're doing when you're posting to Facebook. You're getting together with other people, even though it is a virtual get-together. They're not with you in the room. You're getting together with them through FaceTime or through interactive texting or however you're, you're reaching them, you're getting together. And that's what makes social media 
a, uh, social media. And, and in fact, tr traditional media like television have become social media because of the invention of the cell phone. And what I mean by that is watching television now involves texting others what you just saw, or it involves going online and looking up background on characters, or it involves taking part in contests uh, to, to dismiss contestants from the show. So TV is a social medium today, in part because of the influence of cell phones on the way that TV is watched. And that just speaks to a, an overall historical trend for media in general. When new media come out, and what we're looking at is social media now, who knows what we'll be looking at in five years, ten years, maybe it's going to be a, a holograph, a hologram, excuse me, you know, that 3D projected image on your, on your desk of a person. Um, maybe it's going to be something that's implanted in, in your brain. We, we don't know where technology is going, but new media never replace old media. They just cause old media like TV to adapt to the new circumstances and in, in order to survive. And the book talks about that in terms of newspapers. Um, you know, newspapers originally used to have a place for people to write their own thoughts on a blank white sheet of paper. And that led to what is known as citizen journalism, which is to say that people are reporting news who are not experts, who are not trained in journalistic investigative techniques, but they are nonetheless breaking news. And that's exactly what's happening on Twitter today. That's what's happened with a lot of these um, shooting incidents between police officers and African Americans, is they've been captured by people who are not professional journalists, but who are nonetheless providing information that becomes a news story. So, in essence, media adapt, new media um, cause old media to adapt, and new media forge the way in new, new directions. Now, back to this book. Uh, this book will provide what it considers, what the author considers to be critical approaches from the humanities to study social media, critical approaches. So we're not going to have a lot of scientific studies. What we're going to have, in essence, is a theory or a couple of theories that are presented in each chapter. And then that theory is going to explain what's happening with social media use. And we'll start that tomorrow with chapter two. But for today, we can kind of consider the core of what this chapter is all about is social media as a practice. And so when you think about social media for today's discussion post, I want you to think about how is your social media practiced? How is your use practiced? That's a better way to say it. A previous sentence was clumsy. But in essence, when do you get on it? What situations are you in when you're on social media? Are you around other people? Are you in transit? Are you sitting? Are you standing? Are you in crowds? And how long do you use social media for? And anything else that you can add to your description of how you are practicing the use of social media, that's what we want to focus on today. And let's not forget the D2L for this class, the main vehicle by which we're going to complete our assignments, is in itself kind of social media. That's why I'm having you capture your RSC posts and place them under the discussion tab so that we can have a kind of social reaction amongst all of us. And so for today, that also means you must have, by 12 o'clock, you must have um, posted a, an introduction video of yourself and then for the next class, by tomorrow at 12 noon, I'm going to have everybody having watched each other's videos and post a one sentence reaction. Some people have already done that, I have, I've gotten it started and that's gonna be one of the assignments for tomorrow. So now I'd like to just wrap up the video by asking some big questions about social media in terms of our practice of social media. How many people use social media for this practice? To feel comfortable in crowds, for example. You're in a crowd, and you feel uncomfortable, you don't know anybody, and so breaking out the phone helps you feel comfortable. You're talking to other people who you know, even though they're not with you in the crowd. How many people use social media to validate themselves? They want to post something, it appears, because they want somebody to react. They want somebody to say, oh, you look good, or they want somebody to say, have fun, or they want somebody to say, you're right about what you just said. It's the feeling of validation that they are seeking on Facebook or whatever they're doing that on. Um, how many people will be using social media to say something privately to someone else today? You're, you're three people together and you want to leave, but you don't want to offend the other person because it's their apartment. And so you text the third person, you say, are you ready to go yet? So that it seems like you both want to leave and it's a way of communicating privately without that other person knowing what's going on. Social media is a practice. And so as we head into the rest of the course, just think about that. Think about how your practices of social media are affecting the way that you think, you believe, and you feel. Have a great day.